This program aims to find solutions to your medical queries. It seeks answers to common health problems that have been hounding you. We will help you out in finding answers to your medical concerns. Good evening everyone, I'm Angel Jacob and this is MedTalk, your weekly on-air health consultation here on the Solar News Channel. Set of the summer season. Most people are gearing towards lots of outdoor activities with family members and friends. But along with the excitement and the fun come the dangers and risks involved in the warmest time of the year. The main culprit would have to be excessive exposure to the sun. Some of the common summer diseases are sunburns, skin problems, stomach ailments such as uh, diarrhea, sore eyes, dog bites, and flu. Usually uh, mostly due to the hot, humid weather during summer. Too much sun exposure can lead to heat exhaustion and cramps and heat stroke. Another hazard is direct contact with more people in airports, beaches, and other public places. Para doon sa mga madalas na mag out of town during summer, so, dapat maging handa tayo sa mga dadalhin natin. Magdala ng sunblock uh, na ilalagay 30 minutes before uh, lumabas to do your outdoor activities. Drink lots of fluids. If you're not careful, you might easily get infected with colds and cough because of the erratic weather patterns. How can you better protect yourself against these summer diseases? What are some possible home remedies? All these and more tonight on MedTalk. Joining us tonight is Dr. Maria Victoria Pilares Cruz, a national board member of the Philippine Academy of Family Physicians and a family medicine specialist from the University of Santo Tomas Hospital. Also with us is Dr. Eva Irene Maglonzo, the Executive Secretary of the Philippine Academy of Family Physicians and a medical specialist from the General from the Philippine General Hospital and the University of Santo Tomas Hospital. You may join our discussion by calling our hotline at 548-4678. Good evening, doctors. Welcome to the show. Good evening. Good evening. Summer Thanks, is here and the heat is on. Yes. <laughs> it's so hot these days yeah. and uh, just like uh, the, the BTR said, um, it brings about uh, skin problems, yes. digestive problems, and, and different types of virus that we can get uh, during the summer. But first, let's talk about uh, summer skin problems, the most common, common summer skin problems. Let's start off with sunburn. So please tell yes. us what, the, what exactly is sunburn. Uh, well, Dr. it's a, an acute inflammatory reaction due to exposure to the sun. But uh, people can also get sunburn like Although in the Philippines, we don't have tanning salons, so it's mostly due to direct effect of uh, the sunlight. Mm -hmm. So this can cause erythema, this can cause redness of the skin. Sometimes there is also associated itching. So we need to really protect our body against uh, sunburn because it also depends on the UV light, uh, UV radiation. There are three types, the A, B, and uh, the C. So the A and B are the most uh, harmful to our skin because they are the ones that penetrate the atmosphere. While the UVC uh, is uh, filtered by the ozone layer. Mm -hmm. So that's why you, you would see that in sunblocks or sun protect, protection lotions, this usually refers to UVA and UVB mm -hmm. uh, protection. And uh, we talk about the protection, we talk about the sun. Um, does the, do you think, uh, in, in your medical expertise, the summer here in the Philippines every year, it, it gets hotter, it gets more humid, it gets drier? What do you think of this? Dr. Yes, Maglonto. it changes because of the climate change. Um, originally, summer is usually April. But March, sometimes there's already hot weather mm -mm. when the Holy Week starts. Yes. Usually, it feels hot. Yes. <laughs> so those are some of the changes. But uh, unfortunately, also, there were also some rain during that season. Mm -hmm. So the 
change in weather, like it will rain, that it will become hot. So that will cause some of the different summer diseases also. Mm -hmm. And uh, going back to uh, sunburn, you yeah. uh, mentioned the uh, AB and UVC. Is there a particular uh, time of day that um, we need our sun protection the most? And there are times during the day, even when we're under the sun, that we uh, can skip sun protection? Is that correct? <laughs> well, uh, they, they say that uh, you need to really avoid the sun between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. But if you need to really go out into the sun during that time, then you have to wear sun protection. Mm -hmm. it's, it's quite uh, fortunate for us Filipinos, since we are medium to dark skin, that we have already uh, a lot of melanin to protect us from, the, uh, from immediate uh, sunburn. No? Mm -hmm. But for those who are fair skin, they easily sunburn mm -hmm. but for those who are darker skin they easily tan naman so it's uh, uh, it's more advisable that you use a higher protection for those who are fair skin like SPF 30 and above while if you have a more uh, medium or darker skin you can use at least not less than an SPF 15 mm -hmm. so SPF 30 and above for fair skin and um, 15, 15 for those who are, are already uh, naturally tanned, so yes. to speak. How, how so, often should we apply uh, our sunblock? So you should apply 30 minutes before going out or before exposure to the sun. Then you have to reapply because the others, they just do it once. You should reapply every two hours. Mm -hmm. So if you do it once, you're more prone to sunburn? Is, is that yes, correct? you can still get the sunburn mm -hmm. if you don't reapply. Mm -hmm. And the, the sunburn, um, um, a quick description of what it looks like and, and the, the feeling or the, uh, that one is already sunburned. Because sometimes, hindi mo na napapansin that you're already burned by the sun because you enjoy the sun that much. And you want to achieve a certain color. But little do you know, nasusunog ka na pala ng araw. So, yes, uh, it doesn't appear, you, the redness is, doesn't appear right away. Usually after two to four hours. So if you're sunbathing, then you don't notice the effects but when you get out of the sun two to four hours then that's the time you see the erythema uh, and it could be a, a little painful also uh, because of the the burn of the skin mm -hmm. so you you really have to stay away from the sun get as much protection wear uh, the proper clothing to protect you against sun exposure mm -hmm. and what's first aid what is your first aid let's say you're you're out uh, at the beach you're traveling somewhere and you have no access to to go to your doctor what is the first aid remedy that uh, you can do for sunburn Dr. you can uh, place cooling ointments like zinc oxide it's easily available in drug stores then, of course, you have to drink so that you prevent the complications. Mm How -hmm. about a cucumber? Uh, just cooling, something cooling, yeah, I mean, which has, is readily accessible <coughs> if you're at the beach and, and um, you It have has no cooling food. effect, but as far <laughs> as these things are concerned, we don't have uh, studies, scientific studies. Okay, so when it comes to sunburn, um, prevention, wear your SPF, um, if you do get a, um, a burn, then and address it uh, just as Dr. Maglonso has, has mentioned. Now we move on to uh, jellyfish and sea urchin. Uh, we like to wade in the water. We like to enjoy the water at the beach. But little do we know that you know, um, there might be jellyfish or sea urchin uh, that we don't notice. So what are the um, signs that you have already been bitten? And uh, how do you remedy this uh, skin problem? Uh, usually there's a stinging sensation that is experienced by uh, after the after the sting of the jelly, jellyfish or in cases of sea urchin because of the spines mm -hmm. so it's more it's a parang puncture wound no so if you step on a sea urchin so like for jellyfish there are some poisonous jellyfishes although i'm not a mar marine biologist okay. <laughs> But based on your experience when yes. they come to you. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, it's really hard to determine whether it's poisonous or non-poisonous, but uh, from the point of view of the doctor, you really need to uh, manage the patient right away, like if there is some uh, hypersensitivity reaction, because the skin reaction may not be, it may not be just a local skin reaction. The patient may also go into uh, 
an uh, anaphylactic reaction or hypersensitivity reaction due to the toxins produced by the jellyfish. Mm -hmm. So you have to check also the airway, the breathing, uh, and make sure that the patient is uh, brought to the emergency room right away. Mm -hmm. And um, in relation to that, um, first aid that, that has been actually administered to me when I was bitten before was suka. Yeah. Suka and most sometimes it's urine, but urine hasn't been. Yeah. <laughs> no studies <laughs> also. <laughs> but what is it about um, the vinegar? Before we cut to the break, what is it they about say the vinegar? They it's the acidity, but that's the more common. But of course, we don't have uh, studies on that. Mm -hmm. But the important thing is like uh, we have to address the first aid that could be given. Like if it's bleeding, we can actually tie it with a piece of cloth. Then um, the important thing is we can give antihistamines if uh, you have one but the tablet will not work right away so as mentioned earlier by Dr. Cruz we really have to bring the patient to the nearest hospital so that an injectable antihistamine can be given okay, so and then the other things like injection for tetanus because there can be other poisonous materials also mm -hmm. so this uh, this shouldn't be left uh, alone yeah. When you're bitten or, or, or it, uh, if it's already stung by, stung by a jellyfish, yeah. then mm -hmm. you should uh, bring that person to the uh, doctor right away. Yes. Doctors will talk more about um, skin uh, conditions during the summer. We'll talk about heat stroke and exhaustion, all that and more when MedTalk returns. According to the Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration or PAGASA, the hottest temperature recorded in Metro Manila was 38.5 degrees Celsius recorded on May 14, 1987. Back here on Med Talk, now it's time to talk about summer safety. Doctors, summer safety when it comes to uh, heat stroke and heat exhaustion. Let's first talk about heat stroke. Uh, what exactly is a heat stroke and how does one suffer from a heat stroke? Dr. Cruz. Oh, okay. So, uh, actually, there, these are different degrees. The, the worst degree is the heat stroke, where the patient can really present with confusion, delirium. Uh, the temperature would be uh, about 40 degrees centigrade and the patient may not be sweating. Okay, so uh, the patient will also have warm skin or red skin. So, and the patient uh, will, will be more toxic. No? And therefore, uh, this means that the patient is really dehydrated. Mm -hmm. Heat exhaustion is uh, a, a less severe type of uh, heat stress. No? So the patient may also present with dizziness, nausea, vomiting. Uh, again, this is uh, addressed by adequate hydration and putting the patient in a cool place. But for heat stroke, this is actually a medical emergency. Mm -hmm. So you should uh, really differentiate heat stroke from heat exhaustion uh, because the patient needs to be brought emergency for emergency treatment, for hydration and to immediately bring down the, the temperature. Mm -hmm. What happens to the individual? What happens uh, inside the individual when one has, uh, you've mentioned the heat stroke, there, there's vomiting and, and uh, you don't need to sweat for you to um, be diagnosed uh, that you're already uh, having a heat stroke. But, but how does this happen? And, and uh, what are the, the factors that lead to one having a heat stroke? Usually it's the extreme temperatures. A temperature of 40 degrees and above can lead to this heat stroke. How, how do then we know also that the dehydration is, also. Uh -huh. How do we know that, that that's the temperature when we're out in the sun? It's a, it's a sign of dehydration and you're, you're wanting to, to drink a lot of water. A sign that you're already dehydrated that it may lead to a heat stroke? There are correct? signs of dehydration like uh, usually you can look at the lips. No? So if it's so dry, you can look at the tongue also. Or you can look at the lids. No? So usually they are sunken already. And of course the skin, if it's very dry also, those are things that they can look out for. Mm -hmm. 
And the uh, first aid for heat stroke, you've mentioned to bring them right away to the nearest clinic or yes. hospital? Uh, well, uh, sometimes you need to immerse the patient to cold water just to meet, to bring the temperature down immediately. Mm -hmm. And of course, give them ibufluids to replace whatever losses they've had. Mm -hmm. And heat exhaustion, same? Uh, yeah. Just a lot of You can of get food. a towel. With, uh, which is something cold, then compress it on the different parts of the body. Mm -hmm. Usually, the applicable areas will be the armpits, the back, and the groin, where you can easily place this uh, cold compress. Mm -hmm. okay, so because most of the nerves are there, which needs to be addressed. Okay, so when the patient has been revived with, with this... Um method Bring right to the hospital hospital right away hindi ba pwedeng uh, kasi na revive na siya or he's okay so, so that the doctor can assess what else to do ah, okay so hindi pwedeng porket uh, you're, you're okay already you can continue on enjoying the beach and the sun you really have to uh, especially if attention. you still you don't know how to take the vital signs you don't know the blood pressure of the patient so somebody must be able to do that for them mm -hmm. okay and, and you have to be more careful first specific groups of patients like the very young, like children and mm -hmm. the very old because they are more prone to uh, de severe dehydration and especially if they have other comorbid conditions like they're diabetic, hypertensive, so you can expect more complications for those types of patients. Mm -hmm. for, for mothers, for those who are traveling, uh, what would you suggest they pack inside their bags uh, when, when it comes to taking care of the, the older ones uh, oh, and, and the, younger, uh, the younger kids. So what is a must? What is one item if you were to um, pack one item mm -hmm. in your bag? <laughs> sige, one or three? It's not three. only one. One lang hindi pwede, di ba? Oh, sige. There's a lot. Hand towel. <laughs> a hand towel. No, maybe oh, three items. Kasi you, you, you mentioned, no, you, you have to be careful talaga when, when yeah. it comes to um, all these summer concerns. So three items. Let's say three items, doctor. Uh, maybe a spritzer. Mm -hmm. If you have a... Uh, you can buy that in the yes. grocery, fill it up with water or cold water, then spritz yourself. Okay. Maybe that can help you cool, cool you down. Mm -hmm. uh, any? Then you can also bring water. No? If yeah. the place that you will be going to, the water is not safe to drink, so you need to hydrate. So you need water. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kasi, you know, um, you're all excited to, to go on the trip and you don't anticipate these things and you pray that nothing like, like what we've mentioned happened happens rather yes. we've talked about heat stroke and and um, exhaustion I, I'd like to talk a little bit about um, we go back to the skin skin concerns um, getting a henna tattoo at the beach during summer is very popular is very common but it can also pose as um, a hazard if, if I may say because of the ink that they use when um, the tattoo is, is um, given what do we do when uh, we have an allergic reaction to the uh, henna tattoo? Well, it's uh, advisable if, that if you really have a strong history of allergy to stay away from those tattoos <laughs> because you can't really tell if you're going to react to the dye. Uh, but if you do, uh, that's, what, that's one thing that you have to bring is an antihistamine. If, you're if you have a history of allergy, most probably these patients already are taking some form of antihistamine for their allergy. So they should have a ready uh, button of their antihistamine mm -hmm. <laughs> just in case that they can't refuse have, having the tattoo. the tattoo. So we have our spritzer and an antihistamine. <laughs> we just have named two. <laughs> During the course of the discussion, I'm sure we're going to come up with three oh, or okay. more. <laughs> yeah. Now we go to uh, viral uh, diseases or infections that are more common during the summer. Let's start off with sore eyes. Uh, a lot of kids, as well as adults, get sore eyes during the summer. How mm -hmm. does this happen? Why does this happen? And what are the factors that lead to one getting sore eyes in the summer? Dr. Mm -hmm. uh, sore eyes is easily contagious. No? Like if you hold on to something where uh, there is the infection, the viral infection or the bacterial infection, because another person who had sore eyes hold into it, then you try to place your hands in your eyes then they can easily get that. Or if you use a makeup uh, which has been previously in infected by another person who has sore eyes, then your eyes can also be affected. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't know that this yeah, person has sore eyes. 
So how do you know for sure that uh, it is sore eyes? What are the telltale signs? There's redness, there could be uh, itching, there could also be a watery type of discharge. This is usually for viral conjunctivitis. So, so you have to avoid scratching your eyes because when you touch something else and somebody else touch, touches that object, then that is how it is uh, transmitted. Mm -hmm. So avoid uh, scratching the eyes. And if that's why some people wear, wear shades even when they're indoors, so that they can just just to remind them that you should you should you shouldn't scratch your eyes because you have those shades. Or you can also put uh, some cold compress over your eyes. Mm -hmm. But it's really quite bothersome for those who have uh, sore eyes because of the itching, the redness, and there there could be also associated pain. So they can also take pain relievers. Mm -hmm. How long does sore eyes last? Uh, it depends on whether it's viral or bacterial. No? Okay, because the, the bacterial, usually they have complications already. Sometimes there you can see some pus in the eyes. But uh, you, the viral one, the least is five to seven days. But it can also extend. Mm -hmm. no? They say the, when, when the sore eyes ends, like on the fifth day, yun yung pinaka nakakahawa, is that true? Can you still get uh, no, sore it, eyes? It's actually contagious all throughout. <laughs> From the first day to the seventh <laughs> day? It's through contaminated hands or anything that you touch and you place your hands on your eyes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the lesson learned is, is uh, try to avoid scratching your eyes. Yes. And, and if you have sore eyes, you stay Wash your home. hands. Wash your hands properly. And sharing personal items, yeah. especially that goes into the eyes like towels. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another viral infection which is common during the summer is chickenpox, yes. which is also contagious. So um, please tell us about chickenpox and um, how does one know that they have chickenpox and this is not your ordinary pantal. Because I've had chickenpox and mm -hmm. I thought na it was just an insect bite and you scratch it and then it pops and then chickenpox is there. <laughs> so how does that, uh, how do the, you describe the chickenpox? Lesions, the skin lesions in chickenpox are popular vesicular. So parang siyang may tubig underneath. There's a, an elevated area. It usually starts from the face to the neck and then spreads to the trunk and to the extremities. Patients may also have uh, prodromal symptoms like fever or body malaise. So they may feel uh, some body aches associated before the appearance of those rashes. Mm -hmm. And because of this, this is, is also very contagious disease. So uh, they should avoid or isolate themselves no? because they can also infect other people. Mm -hmm. Why is it contagious? Um, what about the chicken pox that makes it contagious? Uh, one is the hygiene also through direct contamination, but indirect contact can be also if you are living in the same household, mm -hmm. then anybody can also get that. Mm -hmm. So the preventive measure is really isolation. Okay, and another preventive measure, uh, vaccine, is there a vaccination oh, yes. so that you don't get the chicken pox? Yes, is that correct? there's a vaccine, the varicella vaccine. Mm -hmm. So if you have the varicella vaccine, then you're protected against having a chicken pox. But if you don't, and you're exposed to a patient with chicken pox, well, they say that within the first few days, you can still get the varicella vaccine, so that even if you develop chicken pox, it will be more of the milder type of chicken pox. Mm -hmm. Why is it during the summer? Why is it more common during the summer? Well, it's not really... Similar. All year round, ba? All year round. round. Ah, okay. Because uh, I, I remember during the summer, parang towards the, the last few days of school, na, the kids start having chicken pox and hawa hawa already because, as you mentioned, they're in one area only yeah. and mm -hmm. then the virus is just, is just around. So they get it during the start of the summer. Maybe it's easier to spread during the summer because people go to crowded places. You don't really know who you are mingling with. And, like, for example, when kids are in school, if there is a patient or a student with chicken pox, immediately they, they don't allow the kid to go to school. So That's true. And not allowing the kid to go to school also when there's measles. What is yes. it about measles that we have to know during the summer or all year round for that matter? Dr. Amagla. So it's also not only during summer. Okay. No? So <laughs> measles is a viral infection. Then it's just like uh, chicken pox. However, the lesion is different. 
So if in chicken pox, the lesion is vesicular, yung parang may tubig sa loob, in measles, it's macular. Ibig sabihin, mapula siya. Parang redness. No? Uh, which can occur in different parts of the body. Then, there can also be uh, some lesions in the mouth, yung tawag namin complex spots, uh, in measles, plus the fever. And the vaccine for, for measles. Also measles vaccine. Mm -hmm. uh, before they turn one year old, I understand that the, the vaccine nine must months. be administered nine months and then repeated. Booster at 15 months. Mm -hmm. Doctors will talk about summertime and digestion when Med Talk returns. There are many summer diseases that can pose a threat to you and your family if you're not careful. For instance, because of the hot temperature, food items tend to spoil faster, especially those that have been prepared in advance, such as for picnics and beach trips. Usually, uh, due to vigorous physical activities outdoors during summer, and so uh, we tend to have sunburns. So skin diseases common din siya dahil madalas, tulad pag marami ng tao, madumi na yung tubig. Especially in public beaches and in swimming pools which are not properly maintained. Beaches, lakes, pools, and campsites can also be a source of harmful bacteria and viruses. Other summer diseases can also spread from person to person. If you practice inadequate hand washing or if you tend to share utensils, when eating in and outside of your home. Iwasan din natin yung mga kumain ng mga street foods as food tends to spoil easily during hot temperature. Iwasan din natin yung may expose under the heat of the sun between 10 a.m. up to 2 p.m. We're back here on Med Talk, still talking about summer diseases. You may join our discussion by calling our hotline at 54846. Seven, eight. Doctor, summertime and digestion. Uh, festive eating and drinking, a change in routine, you travel, and um, later on you find yourself with either diarrhea, or constipation, um, worse, food poisoning. So let's first talk about diarrhea during the summer. Uh, how does this happen and why does this happen more frequently during summer? Well, it's because uh, most people uh, get infected by eating contaminated food or also contaminated water. Like uh, if they're not sure about uh, who, who prepared and who cooked the food and how well the food is cooked, then they are uh, putting themselves at risk for uh, infections either from a viral infection or a bacterial infection that can lead to diarrhea. But how will, how will we know? Uh, that um, our food has bacteria or not prepared well when it, it's, it's a fun time. You know, you're not conscious of those things. You just want to eat, enjoy the company of your friends, and enjoy the good food. Um, usually, it's, uh, you will have already the symptoms. If you were able to eat food which is contaminated with uh, bacteria or uh, something which has the toxin, then you will have diarrhea. Mm -hmm. So diarrhea is described as, um, from, from my understanding, it's watery? Watery stools. Mm -hmm. uh, pain and increased in frequency. So it's more frequent than your regular <coughs> bowel movement. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's watery. It can also be mucoid. Sometimes it can be bloody depending on the uh, organism that caused the diarrhea. Mm -hmm. uh, first aid for, for someone who uh, is suffering from diarrhea. What should he or she do immediately? Uh, well, the patient should uh, rehydrate, keep themselves hydrated. Uh, the problem is that if the patient is also vomiting, then it might be difficult for them to take oral rehydration. Or they can do, but in small quantities, more, f more frequently, but small quantities. But if the diarrhea is more severe and uh, uh, very fast, 
then they might have to be put on IV fluids. Mm -hmm. How many days uh, should we monitor our diarrhea? Does it go away in a day upon uh, drinking the hydration fluids or does it go on uh, last, uh, in, you know, more than a day that uh, we need uh, medical attention already? No, it's not the number of days, it's the symptoms that the patients have that they have to watch out for. Okay. So like if there is already sunken eyeballs, then increased thirst or very dry skin, then the patient is already lethargic and has fatigue, then uh, they should go to the hospital so that IV fluids be given. Mm -hmm. So once in a while, they should be thought about these warning signs of dehydration. Mm -hmm. So it's not the number of days, but the symptoms. No. I always thought it was the yeah. number of days. You count the number of days that you've already been de dehydrated or you're still uh, going to the bathroom frequently. Now I know it's, it's the symptoms yes. of, of uh, diarrhea. Flip side, constipation. When you travel, you're not able to eat well and, and right. Uh, your routine changes. So um, uh, how do you remedy constipation during the summer, doctor? So in the food that you eat, no? because you have to uh, eat uh, leafy vegetables, then uh, cereals can help also, or fruits like papaya can help remedy constipation. Then drinking a lot of water. No, so at least 8 to 10 glasses of water a day. Mm -hmm. Let's now go on, uh, let's move on to uh, food poisoning. Uh, a lot of picnics, a lot of uh, outdoor activities. Again, you've mentioned that we don't know who prepares the food, but if you yourself prepare the food, then no fear uh, yeah. that, that one might get uh, food poisoning. But still, sometimes, you know, there are cases that you still you still get it. So uh, what do we do? Uh, how do we remedy food poisoning? First aid uh, that, uh, for someone who has uh, food poisoning. Well, food poisoning is quite common for certain types of food like those, those food with uh, sauces, gravies, uh, also pastries. Uh, commonly, they will cause uh, uh, staph, staph uh, infection that can lead to food poisoning. So try to avoid those easily perishable foods that may be um, dairy-based or cream-based because that, that can cause more of the food poisoning. And then uh, for the treatment, well, it's the same basically for any type of diarrhea. So you have to monitor the hydration of the patient. If the patient is vomiting uh, coupled with the diarrhea, uh, as mentioned by Dr. Maglon, so you have to monitor the signs of dehydration. And uh, even the urine output is very important for patients with dehydration. Mm -hmm. So if there is no urine output, it means that your patient is really dehydrated. Mm -hmm. uh, or if the urine is very highly colored, then it means that the patient might also lack fluids. But aside from just water, you need to also replace the electrolytes. That's why you don't just replace it with just plain water. You replace it with an oral rehydration solution, which contains the different electrolytes like sodium, potassium, or you can also uh, initially maybe uh, take some of the sports drinks mm -hmm. because they contain also electrolytes. Mm -hmm. Doctors, we have a question from Twitter. Is gastroenteritis contagious? What can I do to avoid spreading the virus to my family members? What exactly for this gastroenteritis, doctors? Yeah, it's the infection that may be caused again by virus, bacteria, or even parasites. Mm -hmm. So it's just a uh, general description of uh, diseases that can cause diarrhea. Is it contagious as a question? It is not contagious raised. through direct contact. Uh, however, uh, you have to, how they can avoid that. It's still the proper sanitation. So look at the food that you eat, then the water that you drink. Mm -hmm. okay, and proper hand washing. Mm -hmm. When you prepare the food, even the utensils that you use for preparing the food, because it's usually uh, waterborne or you know, because of dirty hands, especially mm -hmm. if you've just been to the restroom. <laughs> so you have to practice strict hand washing for, before you prepare your food. Mm -hmm. And uh, most especially if you're eating raw fruits and vegetables. Yeah, they uh, during the summer, it uh, doesn't spoil easily as, as those dairy-based and cream-based. So yes. that's what we 
normally take with us when we go on a picnic. So with very high temperature, usually after two hours, the food can spoil. If you will be traveling for a long time, maybe you should have a mini refrigerator <laughs> or, or, those coolers. or something to yeah. cool or do yeah. not bring those type of food. Okay. <laughs> So it's advisable to bring the Just cook it at the site or buy there. Ah, perfect. Yeah, good <laughs> idea. <laughs> Doctors have about uh, heartburn, which has no relation to the heart. What, what exactly <laughs> is a heartburn? How do you know if you're suffering from a heartburn already, Dr. Amglonzo? Usually there's epigastric pain. It's in the middle side of the stomach. Okay. And um, the pain is burning and it usually goes up to the chest. Mm -hmm. So that's heartburn. Mm -hmm. But they can have other manifestations also, like in severe cases, vomiting already. Mm -hmm. What causes a heartburn? Well, um, sometimes too much alcohol, like when you're having a good time at the beach. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> or you're eating too much mm -hmm. uh, spicy food mm -hmm. and uh, different types of food that can also increase your acid. First aid for someone suffering from a heartburn? Uh, well, they have to really consult a doctor so that they can be given the proper medication. Uh, I, I wouldn't want to say the medications okay. <laughs> because that they might self-medicate. But, well, uh, usually over the counter, they can buy uh, Malox, uh, those different brands of antacids. Where initially, they can use that maybe to uh, neutralize the acid, but uh, if it becomes worse or progresses, then they really have to see a doctor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, uh, can heartburn lead to other um, types of um, health conditions? Or does it stay a heartburn? It doesn't lead to anything else. Well, it could also lead to uh, more problems like uh, esophagitis. So in instead of just being localized in the stomach, it can also ir irritate the upper gastrointestinal tract. So you can have more problems for those patients. Doctors, we uh, now have a question again from Twitter. I was sick after eating quack quack. <laughs> How do I know if it was, uh, what, quack quack. what it was made of or what made um, me sick? Quack quack is... Um, it's a street food. Okay, right yes. Now. That's the orange one, is yeah. that correct? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> that's, the, that's the egg. That's coated yeah. with something. Mm. <laughs> Orange egg, yes. it's like breaded, right? Yeah. Yes, I see that a lot. And um, made our uh, uh, follower on Twitter sick. So what is it about quack quack? <laughs> it's not the quack quack, no, okay. but it's how the quack quack was prepared. Mm -hmm. We know that it's a street food. It, it's exposed to a lot of dust and other bacteria out there. Then, of course, the food handler who made that also, if the hands were properly washed. Mm -hmm. So uh, we don't know the symptoms because he just said what made his, him sick. Yes. But usually the symptoms that they will have is diarrhea also because uh, gastroenteritis can happen if the food is not properly prepared. Mm -hmm. Then the other one is the other types of uh, in fact, gastrointestinal infections like your, you can also have typhoid fever, you can also have hepatitis A. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the symptoms that the patient has. Mm -hmm. Maybe he also ate something else oh, yeah, we prior to the quack quack. <laughs> yeah. so, or, or the street food for that matter. We, yeah. we're, we were talking about uh, eating street food earlier and um, as much as possible, try to avoid. But if you can't, uh, what, uh, <laughs> what medical <laughs> advice can, yeah. can you give our viewers who enjoy that type of food or who would like to try that type of food? Make sure that the food they're buying is well cooked that it's thoroughly cooked because sometimes uh, if they're not uh, thoroughly cooked, especially mga inihaw, ihaw, no, sometimes they're not thoroughly cooked, so they're more prone to gastrointestinal diseases mm -hmm. for those types of uh, food. Summer also brings about motion sickness, um, especially when you have long car rides. So um, what is the remedy for motion sickness? What's the first, uh, what should we have in our bag, like I asked earlier? What's the first aid? What uh, first aid remedy should we have? Well, there's some medicines that you can take before, before you go on a travel. You usually take it uh, two hours before you travel. So, especially if you're going on a flight to avoid motion sickness. But if you don't have those medicines on hand, then 
and you feel like nauseated or vomiting, then you can just eat some ice chips in the meantime. Mm -hmm. About um, smelling uh, fragrant, um, like a, those small little, uh, what they call uh, that what the, uh, yes, the, those, the, the things that you can smell <laughs> so that it will alleviate your mm. motion sickness. Is, is that okay? Yeah, it can relieve also. Mm -hmm. okay. But uh, the medicines are important. Okay. You should take that. Mm -hmm. So that is another thing that you have to bring. Okay, so <laughs> now we have three. <laughs> we have the towel, we have the, the allergy medicines, and more medicines yeah. uh, for motion sickness. Any other um, uh, illness or uh, health condition that we must watch out for during the summer? They say acne, but acne, it's not really yes. only during summer, no. Mm -hmm. But uh, because acne has several causes, like uh, some can be genetics, the others will be depending on the hygiene of the person. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot which occur also in summer because it's very hot and sometimes the pores are being clogged. Mm -hmm. So one can be prone to acne also. And uh, during the summer, you'd, you'd want to wear um, lesser clothing. <laughs> so you'd want your skin free of any acne or, or yes. acne. Any um, remedy for that? If you have the acne already? Yes, yes. Uh, there are topical medications that can be applied, but they should not self-medicate because some of these medications contain steroids. And steroids can have some adverse effects on the person also, if not properly uh, applied. Mm -hmm. Okay. Doctors will talk more about our health during the summer when MedTalk returns. Did you know that it takes roughly 8.3 minutes for sunlight to reach the Earth? When you look at the sun, you're actually viewing what it looked like 8.3 minutes ago. Since it takes that amount of time for sunlight to travel to our planet. Back here on Med Talk, still talking about summer diseases. Doctors, we now have a we now have a caller on the line, Henerosa. Uh, good evening, Henerosa. Good evening, po. Hi, good evening. Yung question mo for our doctors. Ah, uh, tatanong ko lang po kung kasi ngayon pong summer kadalasan po sumasakit ang ulo ko. Tapos parang naduduwal po ako sa sobrang sakit ng ulo ko, sa sobrang init. Ano po kailangan kong gawin kung ano, ma maatake po yung migraine ko? Salamat, Henerosa. Doctors? So, ang nararamdaman niya ay yung pananakit ng ulo, pero maraming possibility kung ano tong pananakit ng ulo niya. Ang isa ay migraine. Yung isa naman yung tinatawag natin na muscle contraction headache or mm -hmm. tension headache or baka dahil rin sa mata, maraming possible causes. No? Pero kung gusto niya talagang malaman yung cause, syempre pupunta siya sa doktor. Pero sa bahay, pwede naman siyang magkaroon ng mga pain reliever na pwede niyang inumin. And then kung dahil sa init, palagay niya, pwede rin siya maglagay ng ice pack. Yun yung mga home remedies na pwede gawin. Mm -hmm. Henerosa? Opo. Andiyan ka pa? May question ka pa para sa mga doktor natin? Uh, ito, tanong ko lang kasi yung pa, pati yung sigmura mo para kang naduduwal sa so sobrang sakit ng ulo ko. Ano po yung dapat kong gawin? Kasi hindi po siya matanggal, sumasabay sa sakit ng ulo ko. Kasi migraine po kasi yung ano ko eh, sabi ng ano kasi nang pacheck up po ako. So, kung migraine talaga siya, dapat may iinuming gamot para dun sa migraine. Kasi isa rin sa simptoma ng migraine yung parang naduduwal o yung iba nga nagsusuka talaga. Mm -hmm. uh, Henerosa? Opo. Uh, uh, okay na? Uh, may okay na po. Okay na. Sige, ingat. Sige po, salamat. Salamat din. Usually, migraine medications are, are taken even before the actual attack where you have, uh, parang you have a feeling that's ga gonna come soon. That's why you take the migraine medications before the actual headache 
before the actual headache comes. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe she's feeling the heat a lot more, more yeah. sensitive than, mm -hmm. than those who do not have migraine. So, pag mainit talaga, sarili sa trigger head and your migraine. stomach. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, trigger rin ang, ang oh. migraine. Mm -hmm. okay. So, um, take her medications and observe, no? As a patient rin, as an individual, you also have to, ob have to observe um, changes in your body when, when the season changes mm -hmm. and you have to adapt and you have to address each and every medical concern uh, pag nangyari na, <laughs> di ba? And, and prevention is always key, like we, yeah. we say here on the show. So in preventing all these health concerns during the summer, would you have any tips on how to stay healthy and uh, disease-free during the summer, Dr. Cruz? Well, if you plan to go on a trip, you have to plan it well. You have to... Keep in mind that for, for your family to enjoy your trip, you have to make sure that you do not also compromise the health. Like, make sure the, the food that you prepare is well-prepared food, home-prepared food. Make sure that you store them at the proper temperature if they need to be stored in, a, in an ice chest. Uh, also to make sure that they bring emergency medicines. So. Uh, like we were talking earlier, parang a small first aid kit mm -hmm. should also be brought uh, during the trip. Make sure they have also a lot of uh, water, especially clean drinking water because you, you never know if the place that you're going to will have uh, clean water. Mm -hmm. Or even if you make stops in between, you don't know if you can get safe water, safe drinking water. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Cruz. Dr. Maglonzo. Cleanliness is very important. So make sure that the facilities that you're going into is clean and then that they also have appropriate facilities like in case there will be emergencies, do they have immediate first aid measures? Like do they have a nurse or a doctor in the resort who can help them out? Mm -hmm. Then of course have a checklist for the different medications that you need to bring. Mm -hmm. That's the role of a parent. Yes. A checklist of different medications that you have to bring for your entire family. So um, again, uh, we, we started by asking uh, you doctors what would be in that checklist. We'll end by reminding everyone what should be in that checklist. Medications for fever, for allergy, for maybe for GI upset. What else? Motion sickness. Motion sickness. So you have to bring that no, for cough and colds. Mm -hmm. So those simple things. Heartburn. Heartburn. Lahat ng natin. Oh. <laughs> Dapat meron sila para doon. Okay. And the number of your doctors, of course. Yes. Because uh, it's, it's very important on your speed dial, dial. <laughs> <laughs> on, your, on your emergency <laughs> dial, yes. Uh, as a parent, your role is to make sure you have fun and that uh, your family is um, well taken care of and are healthy, uh, free. Hopefully free from, from all these types yes, of skin problems. and don't uh, forget skin the sun problems. protection. Ah, yes, the sun protection. Mm -hmm. uh, for kids and adults, uh, quickly before we uh, end the show, for kids, um, how often should we apply sun protection? What is the best number, SPF number for, for our children? Actually, it's the same it's the for same. adults and mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. You can apply uh, the same SPF, uh, not lower than 15, like I said earlier, and uh, reapply it every two hours, especially if you... Uh, went swimming and then you towel off, so you need to reapply your sunscreen. Okay, any for younger children, yes. make sure that it's the parents who apply because okay. sometimes they, the children yes. place their hands in their mouth and then mm -hmm. the sun protection is placed in the mouth also. Mm -hmm. So their mouth also protected so there can be from the poison. sun. <laughs> okay. So thank you very much, doctors, uh, for, for helping us understand all, all these health concerns that we may come across during the summer. Thank you very much, Dr. Manglonzo and Dr. Cruz. We'll see you again next Tuesday, 7 p.m. on your scheduled on-air consultation here on the Solar News Channel. This is Angel Hakob. Enjoy the summer, everyone. Good night.